Coming to the stage right now, uh, he's probably the smartest guy in the group. He's a graduate from Stanford. Obviously a show-off. And, uh, <laughs> and he's an Ojibwe. The only way, the true way, the one way, our way, his way. And his biggest credit right now, he just told me he just became a new daddy. So welcome from Wisconsin, my buddy, Jim Rule. <laughs> I'm, uh, my tribe is uh, Chippewa, or Ojibwe is actually, it's more well known as Chippewa, but it's actually Ojibwe. And my reservation's up in Michigan. I grew up in a pretty big family. I have one brother and five sisters. You know, when we get together around the table, we made us all laugh a lot at like dinner table. My older brother, like six years, so I just worshiped him. And one time he told me to come in the house and tell my parents that he'd been hit by a car and he's gonna lay in the street. <laughs> and I did it, because I'm an idiot. My, uh, my parents are mixed, my, my mom is native, and my dad is white. He doesn't even know what tribe I am, to be honest with you. He's like, oh, I think you're the Chippendales? No, Chippewa, dad, Chippewa. And it is a big deal that we don't really get our voice out in the media. You know, you don't hear us talking. We don't get interviewed. We have no big name stars that people have any idea of, like, individual personalities, you know? And Graham Greene and, and uh, Adam Beach, nobody really knows anything about them. You know, there's one native guy on the on the PGA Tour, Nota Begay. Again, nobody knows anything about them outside our community. Either one is problematic. Native American just could mean you were born here. You know, really, that's what the term native means, you were born. Um, and the same thing with Indians, obviously, there's us and no one's over in India, so. I like Indian almost better just because there's less syllables and I'm lazy. So. And I was with my friend Patty and we're both like, checking out the crowd, you know, and they're like, hey, that, that dude looks like George Carlin. I was like, holy crap, that is George Carlin. And the both of us kind of freaked out, you know? It's like a nerd having Einstein show up at one of your lectures. It was just like, holy crap, our idol from growing up is here. And uh, afterwards, it came up to both of us, and uh, each of us, he just was like really cool. He's like, hey, man, you're really funny. I love the Indian stuff, you know, stick with it, and you're gonna do great. And he was just so gracious and cool. You, you know, you talk to people outside of that, or when I get done with the show, people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know you guys were just, that was weird to see you laughing, making us laugh. And you were actually funny. You're Native American, and you were actually funny. Bonjour, how's everybody doing? Uh, I need some sleep. I just became a daddy. Well, thank you. You don't have to clap. It was an accident. No, it was on purpose. She's a baby on purpose. People even said, are you sure she's yours? I'm like, heck yeah, she's mine. It's the only woman I slept with around that time, so. I don't want her growing up with that label accident. Nobody wants that. It doesn't make any sense either, if you think about it. The process of making a baby involves too much repetitive motion. You can't accidentally churn butter, right? Oh man, look what I done did here. I did not mean to make all this butter. This is a lot of responsibility, all this butter. Oh, by the way, uh, our jokes were here first. Yeah, don't think about it too much, just suck on it. No. That's what my grandmother used to tell me. She said, before the white man came, he made a funny face. And then he came. I have no idea what she was talking about. So I'm from Milwaukee originally, I grew up there. Growing up native is not easy. Come from a big family. My parents sent us all, you know, to pilgrim camp. That was good. We learned how to burn witches and we had buckles on our shoes. That was fun. But we always stood up from the crowd because there weren't that many natives in our part of town. And in school even, it would become a big deal in school. Like the holidays, you know, you'd have dress up and they'd have the Thanksgiving, they'd have the kids. All right, some of you kids are gonna dress up as pilgrims and uh, well, we have an Indian, so Jim, you just do your thing, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge, so. So then anytime it might come up, it did, you know. We'd have storytelling time. The teacher's like, all right, everyone sit Indian style. You know, the kids are like, oh, look at Jim's style. <laughs> so I put my legs behind my head. Come on, everybody, let's go. It's Indian style. <laughs> teacher would get all pissed off. Hey, that's not Indian style. Hey, who's the Indian here? <laughs> my grandma taught me this. Oh. 
We've been through a lot, man. Even today, my friends give me a hard time. They want to go hunting in the fall, they bring me along as their tracker. Like, dude, I grew up right next door to you. I grew up in the city, man. I'm more of a stalker, you know? Mmm, bitch, go that away. Of course, Milwaukee is known for drinking. So I don't feel bad when people say Indians drink. Well, I know all everybody does from Milwaukee. We have a powwow back there. It's a sobriety powwow, but because it's Milwaukee, they still serve beer. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm like, well, why do you call that a sobriety powwow? And they even call it a celebration of sobriety. They're doing shots to celebrate sobriety. <laughs> like, maybe we should pick another social problem to celebrate, you know? Like crystal meth, our teeth are not up to the challenge. Yay. <laughs> Go to that powwow. Maybe another one. Knowing who your dad is. Hey, that's a good powwow, isn't it? <laughs> I know who he is. I met him that one time. Remember? Yeah, they pointed him out to me. I think it was that guy. <laughs> we got a lot to celebrate, man. We got shoes from Nike. I don't know why, but we did. Why people were like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, I have no idea. They got his shoes. I didn't know what the hell it was. I got some emails, texts from people. Saying, hey, Nike made us some shoes. I'm like, what the hell is that about? Was that like a moccasin with the wheel in the heel? What a... <laughs> Sneak up song. Hey, not a problem. <laughs> Your tribe is being relocated. Not a problem this time. <laughs> no, in fact, they found out they, they made these shoes for us, and the deal is they're wider than the regular shoe. Because native people have wide feet. I didn't even know that. That was news to me, man. I don't even know how they figured that out. They just had like a control group with a bunch of Indians and a bunch of non-natives, and they measured the feet. And like, they got wide feet. They need shoes. <laughs> That's all we need are new stereotypes, you know? <laughs> we have enough old ones. We have enough out there from all those movies and the westerns and everything. That's where a lot of them came from. That's why I'm glad I'm in Hollywood now. I can maybe do something about that. But you got to start somewhere, right? I'm starting trying to do commercials. My agent's trying to get me a shampoo commercial. I think that'd be fun. Never see a native doing that. If you have a dry, flaky scalp, just throw it away. <laughs> Why would you want to hold on to that? That's just creepy. Nowadays, they make an Indian movie. They actually go out and they, they tell you, this is going to be accurate. It's going to be a big deal. They hire real Indian actors or Lou Diamond Phillips, you know, <laughs> whichever is available. <laughs> I saw a show called Into the West. That's how they were advertising it. This is a good show. It was a portrayal of accuracy. And what, I was like, man, I might learn something watching this thing. So I saw a commercial on. They had an Indian guy and They had no shirt on. He was just stretched like, like, like that, like we used to do, I guess. <laughs> looking up. Well, we didn't have TVs back then. What else are you going to do? I'm just gonna... I don't understand that. But the thing that really caught me was that that guy was ripped. He had a tight six pack and pecs. I thought, man, as a people. We've let ourselves go. <sighs> That's how it used to be, huh? We need to do more crunches or something. <laughs> Man, we used to look good, you know? Like, hey. Little buckskin, like, whoa, what do I have to get to that? <laughs> Showing off. Show that in a movie. Show us around the campfire just doing crunches in the old west. Yeah! <laughs> gonna get the white man tomorrow. Gonna headbutt his ass. Back to Europe. Movies that always have freaked me out, though, are the scary movies. They're supposed to be scary because something was built on an Indian burial ground. Like, all right, that's kind of scary, I guess. <laughs> and you watch the whole movie all the way through, and you look, and I watch, and I'm like, hey, we're all Indian ghosts. They get relocated by the white ghosts? What happened here? <laughs> boo, boo. I'm sorry you can't boo here. You got to go somewhere else. What? Even in the afterlife. I like some of the Indian movies out there, though. Thunderheart, that's a pretty good Indian movie. All right? Get to see a res cop in a movie. Made by Graham Greene. He's all cool. Oh, geez, you want to make a trade? Well, that's the rock. These are Ray-Bans. No way. <laughs> a lot of you white people watched that. You had no idea it was a res cop because he didn't have a mustache. Mm -hmm. A lot of Indians, we don't have a lot of body hair. I'm mixed blood, so I got some. It's like patchy. But it's... Can't grow a beard or nothing. Man. I tried to grow a goatee once. It just looked like a smiling nutsack. <laughs> hey, Miigwech, thank you all very much. <laughs>